back in August, I decided to try something I've never done before, parkour. 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 I've always been curious about it, and I figured living in New York City would be the best opportunity to try things that are pretty arbitrary. So I went to a session thinking I'd go once or twice, but now I go three to four times a week, and quite frankly, it's been one of the best things I've done for myself. Living in New York City, there hasn't been much I've done to go out and explore, and the Tuesday sessions are something that get me out and exploring different parts of the city and help me explore the environment in ways I haven't really thought of before. This exploration itch was scratched and I could find even more limits, many of them mental, in Thursday and Saturday classes additionally. When people ask me what parkour is, I try my best to explain it, but I don't usually do a very good job. So hopefully I can point them to this video from here on out. Enjoy the success and failures you're about to witness. Tuesday sessions are the Movement Creative's weatherproof sessions. Whether it's rain or shine, there's always a squad of people ready to do some parkour. I remember one night was so bad that there were floods around the city, but a few people still made it up. Environment, acrobatics, and mobility all serve as this trinity of parkour, at least in the way my novice self can see it. Tuesdays specifically exemplify the importance of environment and understanding what it means to not only use techniques in the real world, but prompting creativity of what you can use and more importantly, what you know how to use. The latter you have control over, and the progress of it often comes with time. Something that I've appreciated above all else is the sense of camaraderie in the parkour sessions that I've been to. The fact that I have a remote job and don't get to see people too often is something that kind of plagues me in a way, but being able to see the same people every week and make some strong friends because of it has been an incredible experience. Tuesday specifically helps push the limits of application of parkour to your environment, and it also helps make it clear to me what I can't do yet. All right, so we got a street light for a light. That was a Tuesday session I just wrapped up. Worked on various things tonight. As always, it's always a mix of things. We're always in a different spot. What's cool is that this is the first place I started doing parkour, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. The first place I did a session and I came and I said, oh, this is fun, I'll you know, do it again. And here we are. We usually start off by doing kind of group things, joint rotations, getting ourselves kind of decently warmed up. Again, things vary, but we did some height medicine today where you kind of sit on a ledge and you challenge your mental fear of, uh, oh wow, <laughs> I am high up on the ground. Yeah. One thing that's super notable is, you know, if you're standing on the ground on a step, you can stand on the back of the step pretty easily, but then as soon as you try it on a ledge, 30 feet in the air, it gets a little scary. <laughs> on a final ending while I'm here, application is incredibly fun. I remember my first night, I knew nothing. I still know nothing, next to nothing. But tonight we did something at the end where we, we ran a route. So you just kind of run on a predetermined line, so to speak, but you can kind of be creative with it. And one of the things I was struggling with was being creative because it's kind of like, oh, you know, how do I actually get up on something? But now that I've done this for a handful of months and uh, vaulting, climb ups, precision jumps, monkey ups, doing all these things, you, you start to, to create this bank of options for what you can do. And uh, it, you know, coming back to the same spot is like, oh wow, you know, I have really grown. I have really learned something over the past whatever period of time. And as I say, progress is a long game and Tuesdays are kind of where that is most evident to me, I think. Anyway, I gotta get home, but Next up, we have Acro Basics, uh, which is indoors on Thursdays. And then we jump to Thursdays, quite literally. Thursday sessions is effectively acrobatics. It's called Acro Basics and it takes place indoors. We're talking flips, fascinating techniques, and trying those things you can't do on Tuesdays because you get to fall face first into a crash mat instead of, you know, concrete. It's in these Thursday classes I started to think, hey, this is a really great way to fail quickly. The great thing about trying stuff is that you get to practice it and not fear the consequences of failure in the real world. The process of iteration is key here. And as we'll see toward the end of the video, I was finally able to get something like my backflip down. That was my January goal. Although I was working on it for like three and a half months before that. I took it more seriously come January. My February goal was aerials, but I didn't fully get there. However, I did make a lot of progress and ended up doing something called the Webster by accident. My goal for March was absent, but my goal for April, as of April 13th, is to get better at rolls. And they started out looking pretty abysmal, and now I don't feel myself slamming onto my spine, so 
So far, we're making progress. Let's go! As you work on things indoors in a safer environment, the mental challenges, i.e. fear, that come with trying it in the real world become evident. This acrobatics class is important to me because of that fear. It lets you face fear in an environment that you know is a little safer, so you get to dig a little deeper into what makes different techniques work and the intricacies of those techniques. As it comes up, like that's really what your rotation, like you're, you're getting some rotation from the crunching motion, like a side crunch, but it's that. On Saturdays, there's an all ages class in Central Park. It's at these classes that you get to learn some of the basics of parkour and work on some pretty specific movement oriented things. All right, so that was um, Saturday class. Today was super busy because of uh, their Winter Warrior kickoff. So it's like kind of a big promotional thing. But afterwards there was um, strength, stretching and recovery, which has been a super, kind of the third uh, part of this trinity that I've, been, that I've found. We work on stretching and mobility. And it's not like a generic stretching class. It's not yoga either. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff. My social anxiety was getting the better of me for uh, the recording part of that. But it's been super helpful because when I went to PT for my shoulder over a year ago now, uh, a lot of the same things are coming up and it's, it was super nice out today. I'm gonna run in a minute. Just the third part of parkour that's been a really, really good find because it keeps me stretching, it keeps me in my body. And I just gotta push, push myself to stretch more on my own, but uh, that's it for this little uh, post rish but those are now on Wednesday evenings. Mobility is a concept I still don't know too much about, but the easiest way I can explain it is that if you have good mobility, you have a lot of control at the far reaches of your flexibility. Seeing as to this day, I still can't touch my toes, my mobility is crap. However, it's definitely been improving and it's in this class that I get to see a lot of that progress. I do blame my career path as a software engineer causing a lot of these issues sitting around all day, but it's not like it's totally out of my control. For example, every morning I've started doing calisthenic exercises and those have improved the speed of my progress quite a bit. In November of 2020, I really hurt my left shoulder and I hurt it pretty bad. Long story short, my shoulder mobility was crap and I also learned the rest of my body started to adapt to functioning in improper ways. One of the most difficult habits I've had to get working on is to do the strength and mobility exercises given to me by my physical therapist. And the accountability of the strength, stretching and recovery class has been important to me because there's no getting around them. It keeps me accountable. These stretching classes are a nice reminder of how much more control of my body I can have, but don't actually have right now. It's one of those things where I want to complain about it beyond belief, but I know that it is well within my power to work on it and improve. I truly hope I can look back in a year and make sure the lessons I've taken away and will continue to take away from this class will stick with me and I'll be able to create better results. Back in July of 2021, if I had to take a guess, I could maybe have made a pretty high box jump. And now I can clear a decently big gap with a single jump. In September, I envied the ability of someone who was able to just do a backflip on the spot. And now I actually possess that ability. I just have to keep working through the fear of doing it on a more dangerous surface. A fear I overcame with something like the wall spin, where I spent like two hours one night just repping it over and over again until I got it. One of the movement creative sayings, and I think something that goes beyond the movement creative and shows up in parkour a lot, is être fort pour être utile. My accent might be a little off, I apologize. But nonetheless, it translates to be strong to be useful. And that's something that I resonate with 
quite a bit. Back when I went on keto and lost a bunch of weight in 2019, one of my strongest motives for getting up at 6.15 three mornings a week to go to boxing was to lose weight and become stronger so that I could be useful in a situation, God forbid, that required me to be stronger. I found my weight was holding me back from karate and effectively being confident in the fact that I might be able to defend myself and others. After recognizing that relationship with myself, and now I recognize a new relationship. So a new relationship with the environment, a new everlasting curiosity with technique and the lack of mobility that's another thing holding me back from being, well, useful in some ways. The three classes really play into each other and every time I feel like I'm so far from some sort of goal, I find a sense of comfort knowing that it means I get to keep working at something I enjoy far more than I would have guessed. I gave up on guitar because I realized I didn't love the process of having to constantly learn new chords and failing at a song. And I realized I was just looking for the end goal. But with something like parkour, I find that I love the process of failure. I love the process of being able to find out, hey, I now have 10 different ways to get over one wall, where a year ago, I would have had zero. I still run and practice karate consistently, but parkour has been something I have been constantly able to improve at while still feeling like I have so far to go. And a thank you to everyone and everything that's been involved in getting me here, I guess. As of wrapping up this script in February and recording this voiceover in the middle of April, this video has taken a while, hence the scattered footage. A big reason that I've been enjoying parkour so much is that I finally realized that I'm as different as anyone else. Sure, I'm a very average person, but I'm also as different as any other person out there. For the first time, I'm not in an environment of people who are just like me, other students, other software engineers, etc. I feel as though I'm part of a truly great group of friends while having yet to find my limit in an activity we can all connect over. The things we love to do, the things we want to get good at, take time. You might hear this a lot, but you have to enjoy the process to some degree. The end result is great. The feeling of doing a successful backflip is awesome. Maybe one day I'll feel good enough to do it over grass or something. The process of being able to fail and not feeling poor about yourself and enjoying that sense of improvement is super important. And to me, it's a really good indication of whether or not something aligns with who I want to be. Anyway, that's about it. So thanks so much for watching. I do parkour with the Movement Creative. You can check out the link to them in the description down below. If you're in Boston or, or Seattle, I know for a fact there are some cool parkour places around and parkour groups around. You can do parkour everywhere. Right now I do it in a playground. I'll also leave some social media links to the coaches. Uh, so if you want to see some really cool stuff that they put on their Instagram stories and such, check those out. There might be some other ones in there of people who I do parkour with, depending on if anyone wants them in there, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go try and balance on one hand for now, but have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. No marks were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs> Unlike and unsubscribe. <laughs> no.